and get some introductions going here. Uh, the person we're missing is John Friedrich. We have Carl Nuizel on my far left, Tour Nelson, uh, board members, uh, Bob Warnick, I'm chair, Polly McMurty, and uh, the zoning administrator is Tom Badowski, who you all know. Okay. Um, if you introduce yourselves or somebody introduce your team. So I'm Dave Birmingham from Twin City Subaru. Uh, Jose Oliver. Uh, Brian Lane Carnes is the engineer and lead on the project. Um, Joe Green is the architect. And uh, I, I don't see him, but I, I heard Ryan, who uh, uh, works for our contractor, uh, uh, Cummings. Paul, Paul Simon's on there as well. And Paul Simon was somewhere a minute yeah, ago. Yeah, he, he's Paul. there. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, he's muted. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. Yeah, my problem is I cannot read names at this distance. Can you guys read names at this distance? I can kind of tell. I can tell Michael Ross. If I know the person, know the name, I okay. can. All right. Well, thank hey, you, um, Mike. Michael, you're here as well. Yes, I am. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, Mike Rushman with Land Strategies. I'm here on behalf of uh, uh, Berlin Mall uh, LLC. Hello, Michael. Uh, hi, and I'm not sure why my video isn't working. I had some problem getting into this, uh, but as long as you can hear me, that's fine. We can yeah. hear you. Yep. Okay. Um, so we have one application tonight. The application is by Berlin S1 Realty, LLC, Dave Birmingham. Uh, and uh, for its major site plan review of approximately 13,000 square, gross square foot addition, to existing 11,900 gross square foot auto dealership. This uh, project is located on 32 Berlin uh, Mall Road. And uh, uh, I'm going to ask Dave to kick it off and tell us what you're proposing here and give us an overview or, or turn it over to Brian. Yeah, I'll probably turn it over to Brian. He will articulate it much clearer than I shall, I think. Okay, Brian, we'd, okay. Like, we'd, we'd like an overview. Uh, we're obviously going to go through all the criteria. Uh, uh, I got to tell you, I'm not optimistic, but it's closed tonight, so I'm, I'm not shooting for that kind of thing because I think there's going to be some loose ends. But let's go as, through as much as we can. Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, first, uh, as Dave said, I just like to thank TRB for scheduling this special hearing. We do appreciate it uh, since we are trying to get this project uh, underway as soon as we can. Um, and at, at the beginning here, I also wanted to just acknowledge uh, up front, there has been some discussion around this project uh, and whether the proposed project fits the vision for the Berlin Town Center uh, as expressed both in the town plan and in the um, recently uh, conditionally approved new town center application um, that the town had before the, the downtown development board. Um, Twin City Subaru absolutely uh, supports the town's development of the new town center. Um, and we acknowledge the work that's been put in by the town and the other stakeholders uh, to achieve the, the designation. And um, just also wanted to acknowledge that, that the, the designation itself will certainly benefit uh, Twin City Subaru. Um, however, the, the project, uh, as we're presenting it tonight, is designed to meet uh, to the great ex greatest extent we can, given the existing lot configuration the, um, the topography of the site and the existing building, uh, the land use and development regulations. Um, the zoning regulations are the document that the town created uh, to define the specific requirements uh, that projects have to meet in order to implement the vision uh, of the town plan, including the town center. Um, and we believe that the project meets the current zoning requirements with limited exceptions um, that we believe can be approved as part of a, an existing non-conforming lot um, and that the proposed uh, project brings the property significantly closer uh, to the vision of the town center than what exists there now. Um, so just wanted to, to say at the, at the top that we're here to present to the board how our design specifically meets the, the criteria of, of the land use and development regulations and, and happy to answer any questions from the board or the public uh, regarding our compliance with the zoning. Um, Ryan, let me stop you there. I failed, sure. to, I failed to swear everybody in. Oh, great. Let's do that. It's been so while well, good to <laughs> since we've done this. Uh, I'm going to ask everybody that attends to give testimony before this board tonight to please raise your right hand. 
Do you swear to tell the truth, and nothing but the truth, the matters before this board tonight, and the penalties of perjury? I do. I do. Michael, I'm assuming you raised your hand. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, uh, go, go ahead, Brian. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no problem. Glad, glad we got that taken care of. Um, oh, so yeah. I'm gonna... one, one more formality. I think everybody here is either with this project in one form or another, uh, or has a vested interest in this project. Is anybody here requesting party status? Yes. Michael? Yes. Okay. Is a buddy property owner you're requesting property status on behalf of the uh, Berlin Mall? Correct. Okay. Anybody have any objection to that? That makes sense. Okay. Party status is granted. Is granted. Um, okay. Please proceed now, Brian. What do you got Great. Uh, so I'm just going to bring up my screen here. Uh, is everyone seeing that relatively well anyway? There you are, yep. Yep. <clears throat> Excellent. Um, so this is just a, your standard Google overhead just to orient everybody. I'm, I'm sure everybody knows where this is, but just in case, um, this is the existing Twin City Subaru dealership property and it's situated here along Berlin Mall Road um, next to the mall, the, uh, the Kohl's store, and then to the the south of the two other uh, car dealerships, 802 Toyota and, and 802 Cars, um, Fisher Road and the hospital across the street. So just as a general orientation. Um, and so let us start with the existing site. Ah, so here's the, uh, here's the, the plan of the existing site. Um, there's the existing car dealership here in the middle um, with some sidewalks around. Um, the majority of the rest of the site is devoted to um, parking areas for visitors and um, car storage for um, both cars to be sold and cars being serviced. Um, this is the existing access onto Berlin Mall Road uh, along the south side of the site. And just to orient everyone really quickly, north is to the right on all these plans. Um, so I will do my best to use um, actual cardinal directions, but they'll be rotated for based on what um, <laughs> is typically uh, north being up on the plan. So like I said, north is, is right for the, on this plan. Um, pardon me for just a second. Uh, so this is the proposed site plan. Um, the majority of the project is 13,000 square foot uh, addition to the existing building. Um, will be used for the, the, the existing use, which is the sales lot, which is a, an, a um, permitted use in the town center district. Um, the, as part of the addition, uh, we'll be at the customer drop-off bay uh, in the front here. Um, so that will be for um, folks that are coming to get their car serviced. Um, they'll drive into the north side of the service drop-off um, talk to some service advisors, get their car set, um, and then um, they will either wait for their car to be serviced or um, get a, a loaner car or, or such. And, and when their car is finished, leave from the service drop off on the, the south side there. Uh, so uh, attendant with the building addition, there are some modifications to the sidewalks uh, to the south and east of the building here. Um, and modifications to the existing parking, um, really in so much as they're needed to accommodate the building. So um, we're eliminating one parking bay uh, that is currently between the building and the and Berlin Mall Road, um, reducing the second parking bay that's currently between the building and Berlin Mall Road uh, in order to accommodate circulation and, and the building addition itself. Uh, some small changes on the north side of the parking here, but this is more because of changes grading and, and um, improvements to the stormwater treatment over here. Um, the south uh, and west sides of the building essentially are, are remaining as um, as currently exists. So that is the general overview of the project. And I'll, I'll just take any general questions from the board before we move into the specific uh, criteria. Yeah, I think um, this is a general question perhaps. Uh, uh, in, it's noted on the plans that these are not, the, the boundaries are not, this is not a boundary survey. 
how reliable can are are we on these uh, boundaries you've shown as being the, the property line? So um, these property lines were developed from uh, previous property plots, and we had Vermont Survey and Engineering do this survey on this. Um, what I asked them to do was to locate as much monumentation as they could, and then um, orient the, the boundary from existing plots onto the monumentation that was collected in the field. So um, they're pretty good. It's just not a boundary plat. Okay. Uh, to that extent, are, are all necessary easements identified? Uh, I don't have specific identification of easements on this plan. Um, however, we did get permission from Berlin Mall LLC to apply for permits on their behalf for the uh, work that is necessary for this project that is on their property. How about the access road? Uh, to my knowledge, that's an existing access easement. I don't know that we've specifically that. Is there an easement for that? Uh, I don't. I believe there is, but I don't have that information right in front of me. Uh, so the, um, uh, as we're looking at this, the property line on the um, east side is the base of the edge of pavement. Is that correct? Eight edge of the property. Yeah, line? that's correct. And then the all the property to the to the east of that it belongs to Berlin Mall. Right, uh, as well as to the south. So this is the property line is this double dashed heavy line, but I'll just outline it real quick. And the property line to the north, I presume, is is a is, is the same partnership, same owner. Uh, it's a different um, it's a different company, but they are both owned by uh, Dave Birmingham. Yeah. Yes. So um, so what I was focusing on mostly was for the east, and. Um, uh, in that easement that's not clearly defined on this drawing. So uh, we'll, we, we may go to it later. Well, I just want to be clear. So the slope down to your property is owned by the Berlin Mall, not you guys. That's correct. Okay. Uh, are there other questions by board members? Uh, well, I'm, I wanted to address the height of the building. I don't believe it meets the criteria. Are we to that point now? I don't know. When does that come in? Well, kind of uh, I was I was planning to address the dimensional standards okay. next. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We can jump into that if there aren't any other questions. Uh, we, 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 we're sort of general orientation questions at the moment. Uh, that's uh, yeah. Yeah, we can wait. I so, mean, uh, no, that's fine. That's that's fine. We're we're gonna be there next 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 question. I'm sure. Um, uh, Tom, did you have comments you want us to give us at this point in time? Not now, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, and the, uh, uh, Michael, did you have anything you want to ask at this point in time as an interested party? Probably on mute. No I, no, I do not. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, let's proceed with the next step then, uh, Brian. Great. Uh, so dimensional requirements, um, section 2101 D for the regulations defines Berlin Mall Road at the project site as a, as a C street. Um, so the project uh, meets the C street dimensional requirements except for two. Um, the proposed building is four feet beyond um, the maximum build two line distance uh, for a C street. Um, and the parking uh, obviously is not all 10 feet away from the uh, property lines. Uh, so we're requesting that the, the project be approved as a uh, modification to, in terms of the, um, the building itself, as a modification to a pre existing non conforming building. Um, the addition is on the front of the building between the road and, and the existing building. Um, and by its location is um, significantly improving compliance with the, um, the build two line standard. Um, we can't put the building uh, really any closer to the road um, because of the circulation uh, needed around the front of the building, um, particularly in the area of the service drop off, which is the, the closest thing to meeting the build two line standard anyway. Um, 
we need to maintain the circulation around here for um, customers that may be trying to circulate around the building but not uh, going in the service drop off or uh, emergency vehicles. Um, you know, if we put the building uh, any closer to the road, we'd have a lot of trouble circulating uh, emergency vehicles around the site. Um, and then uh, similarly with the, the parking spaces, um, you know, along the eastern and northern border, they're, they're essentially on the property line um, and we are requesting for that to maintain the existing as uh, approved as an existing uh, non-conforming lot. Ryan, you mentioned when we had fairly significant discussions about uh, the conditional approval of the new town center and, and which the, the uh, downtown board prohibited C streets in the, in the town. Your narrative reflects that you were designing to a B street, but your testimony just now was to a C as in cat street. So I'm, now I'm confused on what, what you are designing this project for. Uh, so we're designing the project to do the best we can to meet the current zoning regulation, as well as the um, approval of the new town center application. So the we do address B streets in the standard. Uh, however, I wanted to address in the zoning hearing the the um, requirements in the zoning regulation for C streets. Um, if the board would like to discuss B street standards, um, we provided the information, and I'm and I'm happy to discuss it. I think for, for this this case and, and and Dave is here, he can speak to the to the nature of these conditions that um, when when the town applied for their new town center designation, it included C streets on uh, and preliminary review from the downtown board staff was that they would not allow C as in cat streets on the new town center the they uh, had draft conditions to that end those draft conditions were circulated amongst all, all the property owners all of our project partners in the new town center in, including uh dave and um and on march 29th the 2001 the Town of Berlin Select Board held a special meeting to to discuss will we accept those conditions or not. And uh, at the end of that that meeting, it was determined by all property owners, all all participants in this process, New Town Center, including uh, Dave Bur Birmingham, uh, is that they would accept these conditions. So, so, um, so I, I, we've we've had pretty extensive conversations about this, and I'm just surprised now the the C Street is argument is back on the on the table. C Streets do not exist in the Berlin Town Center. And um, anyway, so I I think for us to even discuss. C Street standards is a waste of everybody's time. And I'm not quite sure how that hasn't been made clear to you uh, over the course of the last three or four weeks. Um, so that, that's that's all I would like to say now on that, Mr. Chairman. Brian? Yes? Comment? Uh, uh, my only comment is I'm, I'm happy to discuss B Street standards if that's what the board wishes to discuss. Um, again, we've addressed it in our narrative as we were asked to in conversations with uh, the zoning minister prior to application. Um, and, and I'll leave it to the discretion of the board as to whether um, B Street standards should be um, what we are discussing in the hearing. But if, if that's the pleasure of the board, I'm happy to discuss it. That's my pleasure. No. Yeah. So, I, think, I don't see I how think we, we've been told by the state. <laughs> yeah, I don't see how we can do yeah. otherwise. Yeah. Um, Carly, you had a question? 
about the height. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't meet the, the standard. Okay, the so, so it's the same, it's really it's, the it's same issue. Yeah. Uh, it does meet uh, C Street standards. It does not meet B Street standards. Does it meet C Street standards? I'm not yes, sure. it does. Oh, it does? Okay. I mean, you know, this, yeah. Um, I understand it's a difficult lot and that the, you know, the frontage is difficult because the Berlin Mall does own that, some of that land. But, um, there are certain criteria that this just doesn't meet, in my opinion. Well, let's go through the criteria. Yeah, and let's, ad that's let's identify them and, and let's, let's possibly work through a process that gets us to where we're all comfortable. Yeah. Sure. So um, <laughs> the, the, the build to line discussion and parking setback discussion is really the same between a C Street standard or a B Street standard. Um, obviously, the build to line is... Um, closer to the road uh, for a C street. But in this case, the property line, the closest the property line comes to the road is, is 40 feet from the edge of pavement. So it's it's actually physically impossible to meet the build two line standard um, on this lot. Um, and then again, the reason we have this located where it is, is, is to maintain um, adequate and appropriate circulation around the building. Um, we discussed the parking lots. Um, the next thing is the primary street facade standard uh, is 50% of the build to line, um, a portion of which is actually not uh, even on our property. But um, in this case, uh, we are increasing the amount of primary street facade from 33% on the existing building to 36%. Um, and again, you know, given the existing configuration of the lot, um, it just um, because we are building off of an existing building, um, you know, there's, there's a number of reasons why it, it doesn't make sense um, structurally and architecturally and, and circulation wise to make this building 20% wider than the building um, that we're putting addition on. So again, we're, we're requesting that as, as an approval under a um, existing non-conforming um, building and again we we're slightly improving the compliance of the lot to the, the, the primary street facade standard um, then the last criteria from B streets that the project isn't meeting is the building height uh, the reason we we're proposing to match the existing building height is again because we're putting an addition onto an existing building and this is this is really a, a structural issue. If we um, increase the roof height five feet from the existing building to the proposed building, um, that'll create a significant uh, snow drifting load at the um, intersection between the two buildings. So essentially what happens is um, snow will be drifted up against the edge of this building and create an, an uneven snow load on the existing roof that it wasn't designed uh, to meet. So it would be a, a really significant um, reconstruction of the structure of the existing building in order to be able to support that snow load. Um, so that that's the reason why we're not proposing a building that um, meets the building height standard. Um, and again, we'd request that to be approved as part of a an existing uh, non-conforming building. on the standards. Thomas. So, so Brian, a, another con condition that I, I don't know how this application works around, um, except for a, a memo that was distributed today by Heidenberg uh, Properties. It's, mm -hmm. It was con uh, condition 4E of the conditions. The new town center regulations must not allow a development envelope without street frontage or otherwise allow an envelope or lot to front parking lots or service circulation drive without connected street frontage. Uh, I, I just don't know how how this board could, could even make that determination. So I, I'll let M Michael Rushman's here today be distributed to the to the board today. Uh, maybe a work around to that end, but I'll, I'll let Michael Rushman talk about that. 
Um, Tom, I'm sorry. Before we move on, can I just ask a question? You, uh, the text you were just referencing, is, is that part of the zoning regulation or is that part of the, Condi the condition condi approval? Conditions. So I guess um, it's difficult for us to address um, conditions that are in a document that isn't part of the approved zoning regulation. Um, I, I don't know if you can help me. I know we've talked about this, but I, I honestly still don't understand um, how the conditional approval from the downtown board of the Newtown Center um, became requirements of the zoning regulation that aren't listed in the actual zoning document. Again, it, it was a meeting of all the property owners, and including Dave, that said, yes, they could live with these conditions. All right? So I, for lack of a better thing, it's, I guess, a gentleman's agreement. Uh, while, while these conditions be, be rewritten, the, the zoning regulations will likely be updated in October of this year. Uh, to reflect the, the, the conditions placed upon the town by the downtown board. Um, and so, that, so that's the reason. Uh, if, if anybody at that meeting would have said, no, they cannot live with the conditions, I, I believe the town of Berlin would have rejected the conditions and not accepted the, 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 the new town center designation. May I address this point? Because Tom, you're referencing several times that I agreed to these um, proposed regulations. And the spirit of the conversation was, do you support the town center? Do you, do you want to see the town center come in? And I'm 100% behind that. Um, shame on me if I didn't read through the, the things and before I designed a building, realize what implications that might have for me. But the, the spirit of this was, we want the people around us uh, to, to be supportive of this initiative, and we're 100% supportive of that. This, this is now sort of being thrown back and held against us as, as you know, really it, it was, you know, yes, I want to see this go through. Yes, I want to, want, to, want to help any way I can. When you look at the use of my properties, um, you know, this honestly doesn't, you know, likelihood fit in the vision of what a town center is all about. People don't walk around car dealerships. It's, it's not actually something we would encourage because cars come and go and, and there's a lot of uh, vehicular traffic and very little foot traffic. So I, I certainly appreciate it. I'm not denying anything you're saying, Tom, or, or, but, but in truth, the spirit of this was, yes, I want to support everything going forward with the, the town center. Um, if, if we had a building design that I could have held up against that, you know, and I don't know how clearly they were spelled out back then, frankly. Uh, just but like they are it, now. it would have been a, you know, a, a different uh, discussion, I guess. So, um, I, I have to, I have to say, uh, you know, it, it was good-natured ignorance on my part, but, but clearly, if if we're going to be held to a standard that, um, looking at our properties. I don't know how you could, you know, how you, particularly the Twin City property, which is so far below grade, I don't know how to meet what we want in a, in a town center when you're walking by buildings and, you know, you have storefront sort of. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, not negating anything Tom's saying, but there was, a, a, I guess, a difference of, of intent in terms of saying, yes, we support what's going forward with the town center here. But in order to do that, you have to understand that if we present, if we approve an application that doesn't meet those conditions, it's a conditional approval. It's not an approval. If we don't, if we suddenly start uh, putting in uh, approving proposals that don't meet those conditions, we don't get the town center designation. Understood. But right now, we're not in the town center designation. It doesn't matter. I mean, for our purposes, it doesn't matter. We just won't get the designation. Well, but I mean, so. I think what Brian and what we're, we're, we're struggling with is we have to meet the current zoning regulations to, to get a zoning permit. We're, we have a permissible use on historical property that we've used. Um, 
for this very purpose for, you know, it's been there for uh, since the 70s, at least some of it. So, uh, you know, if, if we have to meet uh, B Street criteria, we, we, we don't belong there, apparently. And, and I, you know, I can't up and move 300 employees and, and three buildings uh, that, that simply. So I have to find a way to uh, have capacity to, to manage the business on site. That's, that's what we're attempting. So I, I was discussing street frontage, so I, I, I believe uh, Heidenberg Properties had a unique cure to that today. And I, I would ask Michael Rushman to, to talk about the memo that he distributed to this to the DRB today. Um, well, we're not here to give testimony or raise questions about the applicant's um, uh, proposal. Uh, but as I think most of the people uh, on the DRB know, uh, we've been, we and other stakeholders in the Newtown Center uh, zoning district in the conditionally approved Newtown Center area have been working for many, many months on the town's long-term objective of upgrading Mall Road all the way from Fisher Road to Route 62 with a road that would meet town standards and that would become a public street. Uh, the focus up until recently has been on what I call the southern segment of that road between Walmart and Route 62. Uh, and there's no need here to go into the current state of play on that, but, but all the parties that are involved have, have made tremendous progress on very detailed design for that segment and funding sources and so on and so forth. And so when um, this uh, application came in, uh, it was, I think, a fairly normal reaction on our part, and I think the town's part, uh, to start thinking long-term about how does what I call the northern segment from Fisher Road to um, the former Penny store, how will that be transformed from what it is today to a street that meets the B Street standards uh, from a design standpoint and meets the construction standards for a public street? Um, our understanding is that at that point in time, and that could be years from now, I don't, I don't know what the timing of this is, is that uh, the town will end up with ownership of the street uh, and our expectation would be they'd end up with the ownership of, I'll call it the orphan strip of land on the west side of Mall Road. So all we were doing with the letter that we submitted today was saying, we think this is a great opportunity for the stakeholders at the northern end of the street uh, to come together and start talking about this long-term transformation and that we are prepared uh, to uh, give the, the town um, uh, an easement over that strip as an interim step, if you will, to get us from where we are now to where the town wants to be ultimately when the road gets um, upgraded and, and is turned over to them. So. That's all that that is. Okay. So what, I, what I'm suggesting is, and I don't know the legalities that this just came across the desk today uh, and the ramifications of that, but if, if that strip come, would come under town control, we could help all the 802 properties become have street frontage then. Yeah. And so any of your applications, this does not become an issue. Um, uh, and so I'm, j I'm just suggesting that to, to uh, Dave and, and your team uh, that, that I think it's a unique opportunity to bring this project into compliance on one of the numerous conditions that we have. I don't think we can really talk, get into, it the, into this tonight. Um, Again, we received this sometime late this morning or early this afternoon, um, but that's that's my initial impression, Mr. Chair. Well, uh, Tom, if I could just add one thing, I, I do want to let the DRB know that we forwarded a copy of that 
letter to uh, to Mr. Birmingham, okay. and he and I had a phone conversation today about it. Uh, we didn't want to be blindsiding anybody. Uh, we want this to be as collaborative a process on the northern segment as it has been on the southern segment. So, thank you, Michael. Okay. Um, what I'm going to suggest we we we've got a number of issues that where we don't agree with regard to certainly uh, B Street and even C Street standards. Um, let's work our way through those and see it to the extent that um, uh, uh, there are issues that we can't, you know, transcend. Right. Uh, so let's just hear all the testimony and then work our way back. Uh, to just I don't want to stop here because we've, we've, got, we've got a glitch, you know. Let's, let's go through all of it. Um, at least that's my proposal. Um, and uh, uh, the applicants done a lot of work here. Yeah. Let's hear what the applicants got to present. Uh, are you speaking specifically of dimensional standards or, or uh, the rest of the standards as well? Well, uh, let's let's. Um, I think I think this throws in. I, I think there's a the street frontage issue. Um, and that's a, a significant issue. Uh, clearly, it's a condition of the permit. Uh, it, it, in fact, is a condition of our existing zoning, I believe. Um, the, the lot doesn't meet those standards. Um, uh, and it's seeking to get approval of a existing access point, which we don't know if it's 50 feet or what it is. Um, so I'm not sure how you're proposing to deal with that street frontage issue. Can you speak to that? Um, yeah, I mean, to, to, to be honest, the topography really precludes any direct access from, well, more direct than what's there now, um, from Berlin Mall Road to to the um, to the project, kind of regardless of, um, you know, who, whether Berlin Mall Road is, is privately owned or publicly owned. So I'm just getting down to the grading plan here. Um, across the entire frontage, there's a uh, eight to ten foot difference in grade between Ben Mall Road and and the site, um, and that is you know roughly at a two on one slope there. Um, so there's really no opportunity to uh, um, you know make that <laughs> much different than it is now uh, without significantly disrupting the. You know, front portion of the site and where we have the building proposed. Um, along the bottom of that frontage is a uh, existing permitted dry swale, which is part of the facility's existing state um, stormwater treatment permit. Um, in order to get a state stormwater permit, which we have applied for for this lot, we we're planning to uh, reconstruct and improve this dry swale um, in order to get um, as close as we can to the current uh, stormwater treatment standards, um, you know, as required uh, in the 2017 manual. Um, so you can see that in order to get from the elevation of Berlin Mall Road down to the elevation of the existing development, um, well, I don't know how well everyone can see the contour, so I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, but you can see that there's, you know, so there's a, a, a flat landing up here, and then you go down into a slope. I don't know that I know offhand exactly what that slope is, so we can measure it. As long as I correctly remember the scale. Uh, so let's just say roughly one, two, three, four. Yeah, five feet and 90. You know, so we're already looking at a five to 6% slope on this driveway. Not extreme, it's not flat either. Um, and you can see that in order to make it down to the, the this elevation, there's some significant side slopes uh, most of the way down the strap right either. So, uh, you know, regardless of the ownership of the, mo the mall road, I don't really ever foresee there being a direct connection uh, between the road and the front of the building just because of the, the topography of the existing site. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure that that's the issue. The issue is, do you border on the road? Right, and and I think we're you know, there's 
you know, it could be a pedestrian access. It doesn't have, I think we were talking about just some creative ways to make, make pedestrian access, that kind of thing from the road with that strip of land. Not necessarily a driveway access. I'd like, I'd like to circle back to this if okay. we could later on. There, there's a whole number of issues I'd like to go through. And if this is the remaining issue, then let's circle back That's here fine. and not lose progress. As we, go, ahead, go ahead, Tom. Mr. Chair, uh, Tony Snow from the Berlin Planning Commission has joined the meeting. I just want you to know. Okay, that. good. Hi, Tony. <clears throat> Okay, well that uh, I think concludes our portion of the presentation on the dimensional standards. So if, if we're ready to move on, we can talk about the architectural standards. Why do we do that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring up the, uh, the um, foundation plans that were submitted uh, and I'm going to invite uh, Joe Green, who's the project architect, to talk about the architectural standards. With this, Joe? Oops. Unmute myself there. Everybody hear me okay? Yep, yep. <clears throat> uh, my apologies. This is the biggest part of the file, and my computer struggles with it a little. I will get it up on the screen in a second. There we go. Okay, so um, in looking at the zoning districts and standards, section 2101.f. As submitted in Brian's cover letter, we tried to take each criteria one by one and address them for you. Um, number one being orientation and compatibility. Um, it says new or renovated buildings must be oriented to the street. At least one public entrance should face and be accessible from a primary street sidewalk. Well, as you know, from Brian's site plans, we face Berlin Mall Road, even though we're not physically adjoining it by property. Um, and our primary entrance remains the same on the south end where it is today, which faces the access drive in. So that remains unchanged. The difference here is, as Brian pointed out, is the customer service drop off area is now in the south east corner of the building oriented towards the both the Berlin Mall Road as well as the access drive. And that uh, is the left hand side of your screen on these renderings. It's actually at a 45 degree angle to the building um, for two reasons, to help create recognizability to folks that are driving into the site as well as um, help break up the long facade. So in terms of orientation and compatibility, we feel like we have met that criteria as again, we are extending an existing building storefront um, that is there today and oriented in the same capacity, just bringing it 80 feet closer to the road. So you want me to go through them all, or we want to well, pause me, on each Well, let me stop you, Gene, Joe. My, my drawing doesn't men mention whether we've got east, west, north, or south. So I, I have no idea what I'm looking at. Uh, this drawing that Brian is showing is the east facade that faces the Berlin Mall Road. Okay, all four? It looks like... Uh, this, so this is this is this 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 is the same elevation. It's just rendered four different ways. Okay. Um, in, an, in, a, in an attempt to show you guys, it's an attempt to show you guys that the owner is willing to be flexible with the exterior facade solution. Um, but this is the primary facade shown four different ways. Okay. I wasn't sure if we were looking at all four facades, which <laughs> didn't make sense at all. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we like to wash, rinse, and repeat on all four walls. It's very easy that way. No, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, well, so one word on here would be helpful. <laughs> like, right. you know, East Facade. Um, yeah, my apologies. I, I guess when we, we put the 802 Subaru on it, um, really just as a reminder that that's what it says today. It actually says Twin City Subaru today, but it will say 802. Um, and that faces the road. Okay, now now that I know what I'm looking at, you want to sort of semi repeat? Semi repeat what you said. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, not a problem. Um, so again, the criteria asks that these primary facades be oriented to the streets, and that at least one public um, building entrance uh, face and be accessible from primary street or sidewalk. So once again, 
you know, the service entrance drive for customers dropping off their vehicles is at the southeast corner, which faces the Berlin Mall Road, as well as the access drive that we've been discussing. And it's oriented at an angle to the primary building to create interest and also uh, orientation recognition when you drive in. So it's a point of origin for people to see and recognize that's where they drop out their vehicle. Um, the facade itself is basically the same dimensional facade as what the existing building is. And as you can see, um, Paul Simon has done a great job. We've tried to represent that here in a rendering in terms of landscaping to help break up of the primary facade. But in terms of criteria one, orientation and compatibility, uh, we feel like we have met the criteria. So what, what material is the primary facade? So if we want to, I can go to that criteria um, where we can talk about a spine. Um, the primary facade is made up of a mix of materials between uh, metal panels, stone, and uh, synthetic rain screen, if we opt to go with that solution, which is represented in the top two versions of this rendering. Um, and obviously glass and storefront um, on the front, primary facade. Looks like the middle is a, is a greater than 50% of the building. Right, the middle? The metal. 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 Um, in terms of the overall facade, it probably is more than 50% of this facade, yes. We could do the measurement, but between the storefront, the slate stone, and the other elements, it's, it's probably a little bit more than 50%. It says metal is an accent. Metal can be an accent. So yeah. under under the material section of the regulations, it says metal is appropriate as an access material, and when used it to in contrast to another primary facade material. Yeah, understand. Um, it also says that vinyl or PVC, synthetic stucco, concrete, masonry units, panelized brick or stone, plywood plastic panels are prohibited primary exterior cladding. So it really kind of limits our choices, but really the whole point of this initial proposal is that that is what is there today. And we are trying to promote continuity within the site. And this facade is breaking up the current significantly with the angled service drive, the varying roof heights, and also introducing the stone slate and rain screen. So by all means, I can do the calculations and see if we're more than 50%. I don't know how we define primary versus accents, um, but when I look at the example given under metal, under the zoning district standards, page 2-19, I see a photo of a building that says metal is appropriate as an accent material and when used in contrast with another primary facade material, and the image is a completely metal building with a wood band accent. So without a definition per se, we're feeling like this is con consistent with what's there and we've made a concerted effort to break up the durable metal panels um, that is pretty customary in these commercial buildings with these other materials such as stone and synthetic rain screens. And the landscaping, of course, I mean, Paul's done a great job significantly enhancing the landscaping on this site. Um, and I know this 2D um, image probably doesn't do that justice. Um, landscaping plan, I think we see that that significantly enhanced the site as well. Yeah, um, we jumped ahead to materials. Sorry, sorry. I'd like to really stay on focus yeah. because I, you yeah. know, we don't keep it. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's hard. Yeah. Uh, they're all you know, related. Don't bounce around. Let's just <laughs> get through one and then go to the next. And the first was the orientation and compatibility. Did anybody have a question about orientation and compatibility? Well, I guess I just wanted to say to Joe, the architect, that it would be really helpful, helpful to me to see perspective drawings of this proposal like from Mall Road, you know, what it would look like from Mall Road. Because it's hard for me to visualize, you know, these elevations in terms of 
how it really fits into the context. Sure, sure. No, I appreciate that. I mean, we could call up a Google image, I guess, and let you see what it looks like today. Um, yeah. The point okay. being that we're going to basically replicate that. It's only going to be 80 feet closer to the Berlin Mall Road. But I don't have a 3D rendering available to show you. If we had to generate one, we could. Um, again, in the spirit of existing, understanding what's there, um, the orientation, the size, the scale, the colors, the materials have all been kept consistent. And um, with the exception being that we're creating a new customer service drop-off area in the service bay. So, so something you said, it, and you said uh, it's typical of, of, of this type of commercial building. I, I'm not going to get verbatim, but it's, it's something to, that's basically what you said. And I hope everybody in, in this room understands that, that this is Berlin's new town center, right? We, we don't want the typical commercial building. And I, I'm, I've got to try to impress upon you that, that fact. Um, anyways, I, I, again. Well, yeah. I, I no, that's, that's just fine. You're correct in that I did say it's typical of this type of commercial building, which it is. This is an auto dealership, which is a permitted use in the town center district. Um, as we pointed to earlier, this property isn't in the designated Berlin town center. Um, even in the conditional approval, this property lies outside those boundaries. So we keep coming back to the zoning regulations that are duly adopted as of today, as of the application, are the laws in which we feel we have to abide by. We understand the vision and we support the vision and we understand the town's goal to inevitably incorporate these visions into law, but currently, we have to design according to the current law, which is the zoning bylaws that are in place today. So, 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 so you, Joe, all these, all these uh, zoning regulations apply to this area. Yeah, yeah. Oh, totally understand. Totally understand. And so, I'm just saying so, that. So, so, so you're just saying that it. But you're just saying it. It, it doesn't apply. But it. No, but what they I'm do apply. Is, we're, we're, crossing, we're crossing conversations a little bit in that. We have a town center district, which these architectural standards apply to, and we have a hopeful and proposed Berlin town center. Right now, the town zoning district is the bylaw that we're trying to adhere to, proposing and understanding and supporting the fact that this is an existing facility that we're expanding. And this facade enhances what is there today to try to get us closer to what that town vision is, albeit in respect to the fact that we also have a automobile brand that has standards, and we also have an owner's vision and budget that has to be met. So while we're willing to make certainly accommodations and try to address these issues for you, the other standards of materials within these zoning district standards asks for durable materials. And these are very durable and proven materials um, that are applicable to this type of construction. Would you consider this to be a typical Subaru building? No. I mean, it looks, no. Like, it looks like others I've seen, some very similar. It's, it's typical in that we have the iconic slate tower, uh, which is a requirement of the Subaru brand. It's typical in that the dark gray and light blue colors are provided as primary accents for their brand. But in terms of the amount of landscaping, the amount of added glass and storefront, I would say that this goes beyond typical. And just, I mean, we, we did look at a lot of photos online of other Subaru dealerships that were very unique, that were probably situated in, a, in, in an area like this, and they were you know, some of them are very fancy, I wouldn't expect that, but some of them are quite simple, but yet distinctive. And I think we, we really do want to be reasonable in that we, we'd like to see it be distinctive, not necessarily some, art, you know, 
out of bounds price wise building, but just something that is, it just doesn't look like something that you're going to see on Route 302. And this looks like something you're going to see on Route 302 to me. And that's where I think we're, we're trying to get to is we, we, we want to, we realize that it's a difficult lot, but we want it to have some characteristic that makes it unique and doesn't look like it's going to be something that you'd see on Route 302. I think that's where we're headed, where we'd like to get to. Um, well, certainly I can confer with Dave and Jose about what direction they'd like to take it. Um, I guess ultimately what's there today could inevitably stay there, which I don't think is the right solution either. Um, I think that this effort has been made to create a solution that is unique to what you would see maybe in a different location. But at the same time, it's trying to be respectful for what is available from a budget standpoint and obviously material availability standpoint and still keeping it in context with what the use is itself. And, um, you know, the use is a permitted use. The job is to try to sell motor vehicles and display them in a way that is attractive to their customers. And so that is a factor as well. But once again, ultimately, it's the owner's decision in terms of uh, how much more they want to um, spend to, to enhance these facades. And, uh, um, but again, you know, without a true definition of that, it's, it's really very subjective at that point. Joe, you show us uh, four different um, elevations. Uh, which one are we proposing? Uh, whichever one you like the best. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, I mean, the, the reality of it was uh, we, the, the owner was more than happy to suggest that he'd support any one of these solutions. Um, but this was really a way of also addressing some of the other criteria, such as breaking up long facades, changing, you know, heights, changing sight lines, um, screening with landscaping. So there's a lot of different standards that are addressed in these renderings. And at the end of the day, whether you like rain screening on the building or whether you like, you know, stone towers on the corners, um, those are expenses that the owner has already said he'd be willing to uh, invest if that becomes a solution that the board is content with. Um, going significantly in a different direction from these, that would be a conversation that we'd have to have after budgeting and, you know, design and seeing where we're at with what that solution is. And the truth is right now, the, the cost of building is skyrocketing. And it's, and you know, what would have cost $180 a square foot is going to cost, you know, 220 or $250 a square foot. The, what we initially brought to Tom and what you see now it is probably a hundred and fifty or two hundred thousand dollars difference in in something that doesn't help me sell a car, service a car, take care of a customer, pay an employee. It's it's simply to to try to improve and meet these criteria. To to you know, I employ three hundred people. I want to employ more. That that's that's I would hope what we're about here. You know, uh, we're certainly willing to try to find a way, but. It sounds like there's a lot of conditions that we're not going to meet. And I would suggest that <laughs> at the end of the day, these are car dealerships. They're, they're not, you know, we're not gonna have nail salons inside. We don't have apartments above. These are car dealerships. And, and you know, that's a permissible use. And, you know, we're certainly uh, want it to be attractive and not be a, a blight, but I think you want people driving past us to your town center is the truth. And, and that's, that's, you know, we want to accomplish right-sizing our building for, for the, the demand of the customers and, uh, and to grow the business. Well, I want to move along, and so I want to continue to hit criteria and, 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 and make progress here because, as I say, we can always circle back afterwards. Uh, there, there are strong points of disagreement, which you seem to have and work through those disagreements. But um, uh, you really have probably gone through not only orientation and uh, compatibility, but you've also probably addressed articulation. 
Bro. Well, let me, I'll talk about that, Mr. Chair. That's fine. I mean, it says newer renovated buildings must incorporate one or more of the articulation techniques described below on street facing facades promote a sense of human scale by dividing the mass of larger buildings and smaller parts that relate to the scale of traditional buildings typical of Vermont downtowns. Um, again, I mean, human scale is another subjective term that can be defined by many people different ways. But when I look at a building that is multiple stories and several hundred thousand square feet, that doesn't necessarily scream human scale to me. I think keeping this car dealership at a lower roof height by bre and, bre and breaking up the facade with these techniques meets that intent. This is an approachable building. It's not a towering building. Um, it doesn't have towering walls of glass. Uh, it has made an effort to break up the materials into smaller parts. Um, it's very descriptive in terms of uh, accessibility for people approaching the building. Um, I think it's very descriptive in where you go and how you get there. So in terms of articulation, I think this building does a very good job of that um, to meet these criteria. Questions or comments on articulation? I know we've sort of transcended some of the stuff. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a little concerned because the north end doesn't seem to be that articulated to me, you know, where you have the 802 Subaru. I mean, it's it's kind of a blank wall to me. I think, you know, you're... you're well, once again, when we look at the articulation goals, it's to break up visually district, distinct components that do not exceed 80 feet. That entire north end is only 79 feet, and it's clearly broken up by the slate tower in the middle which is 12 feet or 10 feet wide. And it also has a stone um, knee wall that is heavily screened with vegetation. So um, I believe it does meet that intent. I guess you do not have a facade that's greater than 80 feet that's not broken up either horizontally or vertically. I guess, again, it would be helpful to have, you know, show some people in the drawing or something so that you could see it. <laughs> Well, our doors are seven feet tall, if that's any consideration, and obviously our average people are five foot six. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where when we look at this criteria of articulation, it's pretty definitive in terms of the goal, and the goal is to break up these long facades, um, different materials, heights, and to not have a facade more than 80 feet wide that's not broken up. By design, this is designed to draw people to the southeast corner because 80% of our customer entrances are going to occur through those doors. So we don't want people going to the north end. It's a dead end, essentially, for them. So we really try to draw your eye to that service area. Facades? So under facades, where it says new or renovated buildings must A, feature a regular pattern of windows and entries on street facing facades. For A, our primary facade is still the entrance drive on the south. That is the entrance to the current showroom and will be the continued entrance to the new showroom. Um, that facade uh, is does have a large span of um, storefront windows. That is in the two-dimensional black and white drawings that we submitted. I don't have a rendered view of that, uh, but basically it's existing and we're expanding that with a new showroom. So it's the same um, architecture, if you will. B says screen any stretches of solid or blank walls between windows, entries, and on street facing sides that are more than 40 feet in length. So once again, I think Paul's done a really nice job of breaking up these facades um, to the southeast corner of our service entry. We've even added landscaping um, on the angled portion of the wall to help frame that wall and break up that facade. And then C says locate vehicle and service entrance areas to the side or rear of the building. So any normal uh, daily delivery traffic, such as UPS, FedEx, etc., is at the rear of the building, which is on that west facade. Also vehicle deliveries. So when the, the truck shows up with a uh, car hauler, it goes to the rear of the building, which is completely screened from the Berlin Mall Road on the vehicles. So the only service, if you will, is the customer service drive that we've already spoken of in the primary facade. 
I did not get copies of elevations of the, any of the other. Um, Me neither. Uh, uh, south or the um, uh, north side. Um, just just the one here to the east. Did you include them in the drawings? There were males. Oh, uh, I think what happened actually was that we included them in our original submittal, um, but then I think having significant discussions with Tom about this particular facade, uh, I don't think that those drawings were included in the um, in the package that were mailed out to the DRB, even though they were part of an earlier submission. Um, the zoning submission, but I'm happy to bring those up. If you would, please. Give me one second. Yeah, Joe, if you've got them handier than me, I can just stop sharing. You can share them from your computer. Yeah, let's do that. I'll share my screen. Uh, get my, uh, my Viewmaster on the right side of the bus here. Try that again. Did the old monitor swap a roo and didn't like me? How about now? Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. So, what this attempts to show you is this elevation here is the existing south elevation of the building. Okay. Yeah. With our addition. Our addition goes everywhere from here to the right. So that service drive is the other side of the angled service drive that you saw in that rendered image. So this is the south facade. So what you see is that this existing storefront in the existing showroom remains intact. And then we duplicate that entrance to expand the showroom and then duplicate the storefronts. So as you come down the access drive, this is the primary facade that you will see. Um, and again, the color scheme staying consistent. Um, Joe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, the tower that's shown on the, the south elevation was relocated to the west elevation. Is that correct? Well, we haven't decided whether or not we're gonna put a second one on that facade or not. So that was kind of one of those things where we left it there because it's a good distinguishing feature on the driveway side as well as on the mall road side. So for the purposes of this discussion, we assumed it would still be there. Um, and then this elevation is essentially the one that we were just looking at that was rendered, except this was monolithic and this is before we added the other materials. Yep. So once again, showing you that this was the, sorry, go back the other way. All right, sorry, sorry. This is the existing elevation that faces the Berlin Mall Road. So the existing Subaru Tower is here. Would be removing all of this facade. The lettering would be removed, but we bring that lettering forward. And again, this represents the Twin City Subaru language without the tower. As again, this was the 2D without the rendering. But that's the same view that you were seeing in the rendered option. And then let's go back to let's see if this is going to play the game. 
So what you see here is this is the existing north elevation. So there's one service door and a man door and basically a blank wall. That stays the same. And then we add the addition, which essentially is a duplication of that for service. And then in the distance, you see the service drive, which is that angle drive. And this is just a, um, a straight on view for dimensional purposes for construction, but it's the same elevation as this guy that's on an angle. Then the last elevation is the existing south elevation. I'm sorry, um, west, west elevation, west. Yeah. Uh, which is here. And really it doesn't change because all the addition is to the east, except for obviously our brand tower that might be on this east side. So essentially that facade remains unchanged with the exception of some modified storefront here well, easier access for uh, vehicles in the showroom. Joe, you're, Joe, your north elevation before you leave? Yes. Would you break those? Would you break that up? It just looks pretty utilitarian. Yeah, well, once again, I mean, we, we viewed this as a non-primary facade. It's on the side of the building um, between the other two buildings. Um, so we, we didn't think that needed a lot of attention. But again, I think the discussion is open to try to, uh, uh, I guess, try to find a way to create a solution that the DRB is going to be happy with. Um, so right now it's it's just because it is utilitarian it's exactly what it is it's the service garage this is where the vehicles get worked on um and it's a, a repetition of what's there what's that length? On the facade. what's the length of those two bays uh the, the addition is 76 feet and the existing is 78 feet 140 feet 150 feet You do see you do see it as you're approaching the uh, yeah. driving in on the Berlin Mall Road. Uh, I, I can't remember how visible that is and who isn't. Um. I mean, yeah, again, you'll you'll see it. It's it's like anything else. It is, as Brian said, 12 to 14 feet lower than the road. Um, it is screened by the middle building that is between 802 Toyota and this building. I forget what Dave calls it, but we all call it the middle building. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is screened a little bit. Um, and also, uh, as Brian pointed out in the site plan, um, there's a pretty significant grade change between the middle building and this building. So there's actually a retaining wall that you, that's kind of in the foreground that you can't see here that's three or four feet tall. So between the unique topographic features of this site from the road and the other buildings that are basically partially screening it. Um, and once again, I haven't shown Paul's lovely landscaping in this view, but there's a significant amount of vegetation that's been added to the site that's not there presently. Okay. Yeah. Briefly note that the articulation and facade um, portions of the architectural standards do specifically reference street facing facades. And uh, under materials, I think we've beat that one up pretty good unless you want me to go through it again. Uh, no, uh, I guess um, uh, are there questions on materials beyond what's already been asked or suggested? <laughs> the materials, uh, the, that the, uh, the metals are primarily the Existing building, is that correct? Uh, well, it's 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 uh, proposed on the addition as well because yeah. it's a matching material to the existing. But yes, the existing building is entirely a metal building. Um, that's what it's been constructed of, with the exception of the storefront glass, obviously. And so the new facade, the primary street facing facade, is what we've attempted to address with the articulation and uh, mix of materials so that albeit metal being, you know, the primary material in the building, I think if we did the material takeoff on that primary facade, I think we'd be very close to 
And if it's a 50% mark that we're trying to hit, we could very easily increase the other materials so that the metal was not more than 50% of that facade. Joe, the 50, Joe, 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 50% is not, no, that's. He, he was just making the point that it was the major, the major right. not as opposed we're, to an accent. No, we're, we're not shooting for 50%, I don't think. Right, but we don't, we don't have a definition or a measurable criteria that we can shoot for. That's what this discussion is all about, I guess. All right. Uh, that's, why, that's why I mentioned it, because 51% historically has meant majority. So if, if we're using that as a measurement, I think we can get there. Well, if the board well, thinks the it's is, enough the language, is, that. the language is accent, not, major, yeah. not majority yeah. minority. So that accent sort of implies a considerably less. So I have a question about your statement about rooftop units. You said they'll be towards the center of the roof, so they'll be screened from view at ground level. What about from view from Mall Road? Which is uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, people level. will see them. Um, just I don't believe that it's ever been intended that people can't see a mechanical unit on a roof. Uh, they're expected. I think they're part of a building, and I think, for the most part, the average passerby would not be able to tell you if there was one, two, three, or four on that roof if you quizzed them. Um, before they went there, if you asked them, sure, they'd count it. But rooftop units become that kind of enigma in that it's a necessary piece of equipment to service our building, but oftentimes a big effort is made to screen them, and then the screening becomes all people see. So the, the reality of it is, is that these are very small rooftop units on a building that's arguably the smallest building on Berlin Mall Road. And uh, I think they're expected. So I, don't, I really don't think that there's a, a huge concern aesthetically about four or five small rooftop units on this 36,000 square foot roof or whatever it is. And from the street level, obviously the street level for me is how you approach the building as well. Um, so anybody circling the building is never gonna see the units um, from up, up above, possibly. Other questions, comments on materials no. that we haven't already covered, thank you. Um, in the interest of just going through everything and make sure we hit all the, all the stuff here, I'd like to go ahead with the general standards. It's already 8.30. I got, I got news for you. I'm not good for much after about 9. Me neither. Um, I've been so. after 7, so that's a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're past Carlos' bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, general standards, if you would, please, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. Let me bring the site plan back up. Um, so, uh, first general standard, uh, you know, these are the ones that... Uh, uh, we saw as a part of the project, um, fences and walls. Uh, so there's a fair amount of concrete, existing um, waste concrete block walls on the site. Um, there's two here at the driveway that sort of, um, you know, retain soil and also have this uh, culvert, the main culvert on the drive that goes through them. Uh, there's a, a whole bunch of them here in the back side of the site. So these sort of dark gray um, filled in lines here background here. So um, almost all of those walls are failing and, and starting to take over. So we're just we're proposing to replace them in kind. Um, some of them are um, higher than six feet, uh, but we're proposing a uh, segmental precast segmental concrete block wall. Um, and those do, you know, the, the plan that the construction plans will require um, a stamp design from an engineer licensed in the state of Vermont. Um, you know, we typically what happens is the order them from the manufacturer, the manufacturer contracts with the engineer to provide the, the stamp design to say, yeah, these walls are going to fall over. Um, sometimes they include a um, section of reinforced soil behind, um, but none of them are really tossed, but we're not interested in any problems with that system um, in long-term stability and use. Um, we are proposing one six-foot uh, chain link fence around this new dumpster enclosure um, back in the back, back um, corner of the site with um, privacy slots in it. Um, but no, no board, no barbed wire and uh, fence fabric on the outside of the posts. 
Um, the other general standard is outdoor lighting, but um, typically save that description for the site plan standards. <coughs> okay. Uh, any questions on the walls and fences? And we'll cover the lighting later. Um, special use standards? Yep. Uh, the special use standard that applies to this project is automobile repair or service. Uh, essentially, everything happens inside the building, uh, in the, the northerly base of the building here, um, where we go wrecked or partially dismantled or unregistered cars stored on the site. Um, and I'm happy to move on to site plan if, if there's no questions on that. Uh, any questions on the automobile repair service? No. Okay, uh, go ahead with the site plan standards, if you would please. Great. Um, first, site plan standard is parking loading area. Uh, by our calculations, we're required uh, to have uh, 38 parking, at least 38 parking spaces for the site um, based on. The customer area being um, retail with regular traffic and the best description for the service area being um, service with no regular customer traffic. Um, we are proposing to reduce the amount of parking on the site, which is mostly a function of the building expansion, picking up some of the existing parking. So currently there's 348 spaces, um, proposed is 313 spaces. Um, as I said in the beginning, they're generally located in existing um, locations around the building. Um, customer parking would be on the south side of the building here, um, facing the main, you know, customer entrances for anyone who's not coming to the first drop off. Um, all spaces are nine by 18 with minimum 20 foot aisle to two way circulation. Um, and we're proposing this number of spaces, I think probably obviously because not only do we have to provide customer parking, employee parking, we also have to provide storage space for uh, both cars that are for sale and also cars that are being uh, serviced on a daily basis. The parking area will be um, completely asphalt, paint line striping. Um, trucks that do come and make uh, deliveries, uh, car carriers um, typically come down the driveway. Um, and park behind the building. We have a designated loading area here at the north uh, west corner of the site um, for the car carrier to park and unload carts um, away from the main circulation paths around the building. Um, and uh, snow storage is generally around the perimeter of the site, um, being that the there's enough pavement here um, that maybe the snow has to be removed from time to time, but. Um, if it is removed, it'll be disposed of in, in accordance with state regulations. Will there be off-site storage for cars? Uh, I don't believe so. That may be something that Dave or Jose could speak to. Speak to. No. We'll, we'll be back in front of you for that in due time. So <laughs> not currently, but yeah. But, but to that end, the, the parking in front of the building, does that meet our regulations? Uh, yeah, we may have we may have uh, skipped over that actually. Thank you for reminding me, Tom. Yes, and the B Street parking setback is ten feet behind the build to line. Um, so, you know, generally, I think the intention is to prohibit parking between the building and the street. Um, again, we're we're requesting that this be approved as a, an existing non-conforming lot, um, and again, we're significantly reducing the non-conformance. Uh, with the street standard by removing an entire bay of parking and um, a good portion of the second bay of parking that's out there. Um, that's a, a reduction of 87 spaces between the building and the road uh, or 63% of the existing spaces. Um, but, um, you know, being a, being a car dealership, obviously, um, owner would like to retain some display spaces um, in the front of the building. Um, and I think that, um, you know, meets with the existing and also um, allowed use of a, a sales lot 
um, where a portion of the, the, the um, purpose of the use is to display um, cars or other large um, uh, retail outdoor things, you know, boats or whatever uh, that are for sale. But isn't that best served on your south end of the of the building? And, and the reason I, I I know there's been discussions uh, with ownership about offsite uh, facilities. If that's truly the case, I I think this is one of these areas where you could come into compliance with our regulations by removing that parking in front of this building. And so I'm just suggesting that what you may want to give consideration to. You don't have to answer that now, I'll just... Yeah, and I mean, frankly, it's a, it's a discussion that I'd have to have with Dave and Jose anyway. Uh, it's certainly not something I can commit to on my own. <laughs> Uh, any other questions on parking and loading? Uh, I haven't any. Uh, well, go ahead with the access and circulation. Uh, so access is provided from Berlin Mall Road to the existing um, driveway. Um, the driveway uh, needs to be 71 standards, uh, 26 and a half feet wide and 25 feet curb radii and appropriate um, flat landing at the top. Um, and we're not change, we're not proposing to change anything about the uh, the existing curb cut. Um, as I mentioned before, um, all the internal drives are at least twenty feet for two-way circulation. Um, we are proposing that the service drop off be work, work from north to south. Um, we had a bit of internal discussion about this um, in order to minimize conflicts between. Um, anyone entering and exiting the service drop off and anyone who might be trying to circulate around uh, the end of the building here. So um, in order to keep all the traffic uh, that's moving to the south on the same side of the street, um, this will be the entry to the service. Um, and so there won't be any, um, you know, cross traffic from folks coming out or folks trying to go around the building. Uh, and then we were proposing a stop sign and a stop bar for anyone who's going around the building um, to give them a chance to stop here and make sure that no one is coming out from the service drop off as they're, as they're trying to um, circulate around the building. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, everything is, is two-way circulation and access all around the building, which um, actually provides great access and turnaround for emergency vehicles, um, as well as the shared access through into the 802 cars and the 802 Toyota um, parking lots. Brian, is there a way to, uh, Brian, is there a way to, to make your cursor a different, co different color? Because I I don't know if the, the boards the board saw all that lost in the gray and the blue and maybe they did. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, there's not. I could do more drawing and less pointing. Um, but essentially, I was saying um, this circulation through here goes this way, and then. There's a stop sign and a stop bar in this location so that anyone who's circulating around the bottom that way has to stop here and check to make sure there's not a car coming out here to conflicts between coming out of the service drive and, uh, and circulating around the building. So that's like a roof structure there or going underneath? That's what I'm trying. Yeah, what is that? Uh, this the service drop off here. Yeah, what is yeah. that? Your two it's arrow. part of the, it's part of the building. The, the oval, the little oval shape is a landscaped area. No, no, no. You, there, your two arrows to the very far west. Does that go underneath the roof there? Yes, there? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah you try. It's, it's, it's a garage. You're going inside. You're going inside. Yeah. So, going, so can yeah. I just this? Go ahead. That's part of the building. So there are essentially garage doors there. It's, it's exactly the same as on the 802 Toyota, if you folks are familiar with that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a burn, you park in front of the garage door, they open it up and let you in, and then you talk to the service advisors once you have parked your car inside. It's, it's pretty typical for most car dealerships nowadays have this kind of drive-through service drop-off. 
Did you say that's one way around there, or I, I didn't quite get that? Yeah. So it's not one way on the outside, but it's it's the service drop off is one way through. Okay, but the rest of it's all it's all two lane, right? Right. The, right. The approach the approach from the uh, west is two lane. Uh, on this side of the site, yes. So you're saying this portion here. I'm not following. Yeah. Is two A. That's what, correct. Yeah. What about what about on the south side now? Yeah. Is that two also way? also two A. Okay. Yep. So everything's two way except for through the um, drop off. That's right. That's right. And and mainly because if you went the other way through the drop offs, there's a potential for someone. So if, if you're coming, say out, which with this is not what we're proposing, but this is why we did. Right? And then someone was coming along here, then you have a potential point of conflict from someone who's trying to get over onto the right side of the correct side of the street, right. and someone coming if, down. If, somebody, if, if somebody's coming in from the, from the Berlin uh, uh, Mall Road. Uh, what's to prevent them to take their first right as they enter and try to go that way? How would they know they need so to So that's going to be a that's going to be a management uh, issue more than anything. So it, it it'll it'll be signed as to which side you go in. Um, but um, you know, City Super is going to take paint to inform their customers uh, when they um, are coming to drop their car off. They should be accessing the site. Um, from the north, so either down through the shared access from the other two, or um, you know, preferably not circulating around the building. But um, you know, um, also the point of two-way traffic in all these drive lanes is because we know that people are people, and they're going to find their way into this lot. Um, and so, rather than create one-way travel, we created two-way, so it gives folks an ability that they have to change directions, turn around. They can do that. So having two-way circulation around the building maximizes that flexibility. Plus, obviously, signage will be incorporated to help guide people to where they have to go. Can I, can I just make a comment that has nothing to do with parking or circulation? <laughs> um, looking at this drive-through thing, I mean, just my personal point of view is that would be a great place to put something to make a more unique aspect of the building. If possible, just a thought. Like if it was higher, if it was like a tower just, type thing. Yeah, just something because that would really add a unique aspect to the building that I think we might be looking for. Um, Agreed. Just and a thought. That that actually, you know, we we kind of did that based on some of Tom's. It was a lot more vanilla before Tom yeah. <laughs> gave us a good talking to. So, um, but just, and and that's where it would make sense because we want to draw people there. Right. We don't want them. The north side of the building is is a service entrance. This is a customer entrance. And so. we have a planning commission member that's very creative, so maybe he can give all the great <laughs> idea for you. <laughs> but by the way, all the beautiful Subaru buildings, and there's some really cool ones. Mm -hmm. all, all of those are metal panels, by the way. Uh, that that's the standard, and we we try to get away from that as much as possible because they're they're. You know, it, it's not the, yeah. not a, a, we have them on the Toyota building to some extent and uh, other other buildings. Not my favorite look, but it's that is the standard is is all metal. But yeah, when I see that, it, it just seems to scream. This is where there could be a real unique. We're, we're, and we're just I don't know, we're we're looking for a wow factor. I don't know how be even best to explain yeah. it. Right, just we. Something that will people will come off the interstate and come to here and take a look at it. I, I, that's just something. Yeah, oh, we were wow. Having, we were having discussions about if it could be something that would actually draw, you know, something that people want to look at, you know, that, that they hear about, and they want to see the it, you know. Yeah. And it would just that we made, it would only benefit the dealerships um, in that regard. And and it, we didn't think it had to be anything that was really too crazy. But you know, Tony, I don't know, he maybe he can speak at the end, but he had some some ideas. So com coming out of the service drop off, that that's staff bringing those cars out. It's not clients, correct? Mm -hmm. Generally, I mean, I think at the, at the end of the day, I believe the service clients bring cars up there too. Is that right, Dave? Yeah. So yeah. It, it would be a mix. You drop your car off there. If you're waiting, you're going to pick your car back up inside, especially on a bad day. 
and drive away. So, huh. yeah. It's typically how it works at the tower. Yes. Yeah. It's pretty nice if you're the one getting your car serviced. <laughs> it's it's actually a requirement of just about every manufacturer now yeah. that you yeah. you do this. Wow. Uh, continue on access to circulation to bike ped. Uh, yep. So um, generally, pedestrian uh, ac access in the site is, is intended to get people from the parking lot safely into the building. Again, visitor parking is intended to be in this area. May be some either on the east or west sides as well, where we've also provided sidewalks to, to get building entrances. Um, we are providing two um, bicycle racks, which they're on the landscaping plane, but they're, they're located at this location right here um, at the top of the, the curb to down there in the accessible um, uh, spaces. Um, and the, the bike rack is, is based on count is based on um you know employee and and customer parking and not not really taking into account the storage spaces which are generally generating bicycle traffic um you know we've had some conversation about this frontage along this um property uh and the fact that it is it's somewhat problematic between the drop and grade the permit stormwater practice and the existing parking spaces that um, are against the property line. So we really have no uh, feasible place to build a sidewalk along the road frontage. Um, you know, as, as we heard from uh, Mr. Rushman and, and as we understand, there's plans in the works to, to redevelop Berlin Mall Road and um, we would just request given the um, unique circumstances of the frontage of this property that we rely on the development of the Berlin Mall Road to provide uh, pedestrian access along the frontage uh, on on Berlin Mall Road. Well, and also, Brian, don't we understand that as part of that development, the east side of the road is proposing a sidewalk anyway? Yeah, that's, I, I, I understood that was maybe approved in some previous developments, but it seems from uh, Mr. Rushman's testimony that that is maybe not the current case. I'm not sure. Polly? So uh, will there be sidewalk along the access road for those people who don't want to wait in the building but want to take a walk or go to a shop or something in the rest along of this, the area? Along this access road? Yeah. Into, I mean, is there's the, a way for pedestrians to get out of that site and go into the rest of the downtown area? Um, so we're not proposing a sidewalk along there. And again, it's, it's really more than anything due to the um, physical factors of trying to build a sidewalk along there. Um, you can see in this contour map that particularly on the north side, there's some very steep slopes um, going down to the existing grade that would really preclude the inclusion of a sidewalk along here. Um, and it, it's similar on the other side. There's maybe a bit more room in, in this area um, but once you get, you know, um, down to this portion of the site again, it's going to be, um, you know, the, the grades and needing to maintain this existing um, stormwater, and we're trying not to take out all these trees along here as well. Um, it really um, precludes the ability to put a sidewalk in without, you know, putting it on top of the existing drive, which would kind of uh, would reduce it to, in my opinion, too small for two-way traffic. Can you widen the drive and do it then? Well, we have the same widening the drive is the same physical constraints with the grading as adding a sidewalk to, yeah, to the side. Not on the lower end, right? And can you lower. can you at least landscape it so what, what, it's a what, little what, more? Probably, probably, what, what yeah, it kind of. I'm sorry, I'm not. It falls off from either side, pretty pretty steep on both sides. Not, not on the bottom towards when you're getting towards the, the bottom of the hill, but as you start getting to the top, it's a pretty significant slope on either side. What, what we could do is carve out a, a portion of that driveway. My, my, and we had actually thought about that internally. We, we have a free shuttle that brings people up to the mall five, ten times a day probably. Yeah. But uh, the reason we opted not to do that is when they get up to the mall road, there's no real safe way to... You know they're kind of walking on a steep edge 
if they make a left and they have to cut across traffic to get to the sidewalk on the uh, going towards the mall um, or just kind of squeeze along the, the edge there. So we, we kind of thought it was... It's kind of key to the town center concept, though, is yeah. making, making the rest of the mall accessible and walkable. And so having pedestrian traffic along Mall Road is kind of almost basic, and having access to pedestrian traffic on a Mall Road is kind of basic here. Um, it's, it's, it's would seem to be something that you haven't looked at very hard. You know, I, like I said, I, we, we'd certainly be willing to go carve out a portion of that road as a walkway. We could, you know, do do uh, curbing or something to keep cars from wandering into that lane, but. It's just what happens when they get up to the mall road, I guess, that we, we wouldn't know. Uh, well, there could be a, couldn't you stripe it as a crosswalk at, that, at the end of that road? I mean, to cross? Because yeah, the you, sidewalk you, will be on the other side. Yeah, you got to cross in two directions. Well, yes, because you got to cross here, and then if you're going towards the mall, I guess you got to cross, go well, over, you need to go and across. cross back. We're through the pen, yeah, toward Penny's, or you go across. Yeah, if you go yeah. towards Penny's, I think there's already striping there. Yeah, there? there's a driveway where all the all the all the big commercial trucks go in through there to deliver stuff on the back. I mean, if you were going to cross to the sidewalk, you'd cross, then head south, and then have to cross again to get into the mall. You have to yeah. do what you. I think mm -hmm. there's not a ton of traffic through there. I don't think. Yeah, you can cross by J C Penny's. Yeah, if you want to go I, that I, way, I, but. I don't think you looked at it very hard. Right. I, I think that's very doable. In fact, uh, earlier plan for a sidewalk connecting the mall to the hospital property had it on that side of the road, had it on the west side of the road. Uh, it required moving some features and it required movement, perhaps even moving the road a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, the, the, the one I had seen approved was along the right side, and once we got past uh, north of the the Toyota driveway cut across. Yeah. Right, and then, and there was a previous version of that. That was along the west side. Which Act 250 actually favored, um, uh, the district commission was favoring, which was basically traveling on the um, west side the entire way. And, and, they, and they saw that as desirable as opposed to having crosswalks at two different locations. Right. So that's, so th th it, was, it was doable. It, it may have required some retaining or moving the road somewhat. Um, so I, you know, it's just some, without sitting here and designing it, it's it's something that it could be could have been looked at. I think. Yeah. Although we, I mean, you know, you know, Berlin Mall Road is off of our property, and while there is some off-property work, it's really um, maintaining and recreating the existing stormwater that that frankly has failed uh, and is dumping lots of water onto the pavement. Um, but I don't know that we have permission or ability to build a sidewalk along Berlin Mall Road on, on our, along our, well, not even, you know, in front of our frontage, really. Yeah. Well, I, I see, I see the offer that's been made by the mall as a, as a step to get, yeah. get us there. And I realize that it just sprung on you today, so. <laughs> well, but, would, so, so, if it became a public road, would, would we have anything to do with building that road? Yep. Could have. In other words, um, I'm talking about sites, pedestrian access right now. Yeah. I'm not talking about rebuilding the road, per se. Um, and I'm saying... Yeah, for, for pedestrian access on that side of the road, it, it's it's really unsafe. You know, on, as it currently is built, so... You have to build retain, re, big retaining walls with handrails for people not because if you build the retaining wall and put the sidewalk on it, then you, you'd have a 20 foot drop on one side of the sidewalk. Because I mean, it's if you drive by, it's pretty steep from the road to the bottom, so you'd have to big retaining walls with handrails for people to not go over. It, it, without that, it wouldn't be safe at all. What if they were to move the road slightly to the uh, east? You'd, you'd still have to put some sort of screening because you'll still have the drop. You won't get rid of the drop. So even if, if you get off the sidewalk, you'd have to move the road significantly it's, it's, it's to the other side. What, is a three-on-one slope, Brian? On the corner over there? Yeah, see, and, uh... Yeah, that's what I'm 
Not, I missed a little bit. If you if you measure it towards the corner where it's significantly, that's where it's really steep. As it gets to Toyota, it becomes it becomes a little bit flatter. Yeah, it's three on one in that area. Yeah, that's what I thought. And we're oh, right and in your guard, isn't that still mall property? That's not even the applicant's property. The access drive is what I thought we were talking about, and that's a different conversation in terms of being. We, we did. We, we, we jumped ship, and I apologize for that. Uh, okay. We're, uh, we're I, know, well, I just want to make sure I was following along, but yeah. right now, the yeah, well, well, it doesn't belong there was, to us. There was two conversations. One of the conversations started with, well, if you get up the access drive, then where, where do you go? And. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, okay. and the logical conclusion is you 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 have a path along the uh, uh, sidewalk along the road that gets you to the mall or wherever you know in the crosswalk. Right, right. Which should be the responsibility of that property owner, right? It could be a responsibility of this applicant because the applicant's on a B street. Right. <laughs> well, if we're embracing a town center. Right, except the applicant doesn't own that property. Right. right I think that, right. That, that's right. it's still even with an easement from the Berlin Mall Road for the Merlin Mall owners, an easement is not property ownership. Okay. Anyway, not not disputing the fact that we should have sidewalks. I just think that logistically everybody's pointed out some of the trials and tribulations, including yourselves, in terms of what is practicable along that road as far as the access drive i think we could take that back and talk to dave and jose about how we can improve that for sure well let's let's again yeah. I, I, i'm interested in continuing and then going looping back and seeing what we what we have as issues i think we're identifying this as an issue and uh but uh, uh you you make points uh, and i think we make points so uh i think there's a way to get there but i could be wrong um uh, let's, let's... I, uh, chair sure could I just say something here? Uh, the uh, the states made it pretty clear that there are going to be sidewalks on both sides of that road, ultimately. Um, and um, I think it's also pretty clear that um, that prop that this use has some kind of the proposed use has some kind of responsibility for providing pedestrian access. So I, I don't accept, from our standpoint, we don't accept the characterization of Mr. Green about who's responsible for uh, pedestrian access on the west side of the road. Oh, no, my apologies. I didn't mean to infer that. I was just trying to make sure that I was following the conversation because we started on an access road and then ended up on the Berlin Mall Road. And I was just trying to point out and remind the board that we don't own the property, um, but to that regard, though, I believe it is everybody's responsibility to create pedestrian access, um, including the current and proposed users of the road. So there is a high, high level of responsibility for everybody. Um, I, I think our applicant included to, to maintain access to that road. Um, but there should be a, a cooperative effort to make the road accessible currently, even without this project. Agreed. Agreed. So there were, there were two issues I was trying to raise. You just mentioned the one important issue, which is access along the road, but also access to the road from the mall was, was where we were asking you that, what, what thought to give that. It wouldn't necessarily have to be up the access road. There may be an alternative route. Right. Uh, you know, it wouldn't necessarily have to be up the access road. We couldn't make that happen. It would be logical to be up the, up the access road, but it doesn't, doesn't have to be that way. Can I, can I ask what the board's um, reaction is to the owner's free shuttle service that they provide currently for customers that are waiting? Is that a viable alternative or is that something that... No, no, it, it's not bad for those who, you know, have a hard time walking, but I don't, I don't see it as an alternative to being able to walk yourself to wherever you want to go when you want to go. It's really okay. just want to ask the question. Obviously, we have six months of weather in Vermont that are walkable access points aren't enjoyable by a lot of people. But certainly for our elderly population, that walk is a, a good one anyway. So I think the shuttle service 
No, I think that's Probably great. Probably something that's not provided yeah. by many businesses. No, it's it's not a bad we were thing, but that. it's not it does it's not a substitute for pedestrian yeah. access. And, and Newtown Center is is centered around pedestrian access. It, it's it's the it's the key function of of a downtown. So. Okay. Um, again, I'm, I, it's, 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 I'm interested in keeping this moving along. Yeah. Um, see, see if we can't cover a couple more points before we loop back. Um, board, what's your, what's your preference here tonight? Uh, I mean, there's no way we're going to finish, so I don't know yeah. what. I think we might be a good stopping point. Um, I'd like to suggest we cover a couple more areas, if you don't mind. Right. And then, then we'll, we'll be basically, we'll, we will need to come to a stop. Yeah. Um, uh, because we have, we do have uh, landscaping screening, uh, so we have uh, uh, that next, and then we also have outdoor lighting, which I had some issues with. Um, well, I'll, I'll defer to I'll defer to the board. Do you want to stop here? I'm fine to go through those if it's not going to take too long. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm okay if it's, you know, going to be 10 or 15 minutes, but not much longer. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was going to say, I'll, I'll hand this section over to Paul since he's here tonight. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, so for landscaping, I'll be quick. Um, we basically um, are providing tonight a view of a color plan. It's the same exact plan that you got in black and white version in the packets. Um, this one just has a little bit more shading and color to it. But um, uh, we're basically demonstrating that um, we're meeting the there's a, f a front yard landscaping requirement with a minimum required uh, ten of 10 trees and 48 shrubs. We're providing 11 trees and 48 shrubs. We're counting existing trees as well. Um, and then with the build, uh, building perimeter calculations, we have um, a required amount of trees of 19 trees. And we are counting again, um, some existing trees, but mostly that that'll be all new trees for uh, surrounding the building. Um, and then the perimeter uh, shrubs that are required are 109 and we're providing 112 of those. Um, parking lot landscape calculations are not done because that, that's part of um, that would be required with new additional spaces added and we're actually reducing the, the parking um, spaces, uh, but we still nevertheless provided a substantial landscaping here and what we did to demonstrate this too is to show all the required um, trees and shrubs in the boxes there around the plan and then if there's others uh, and other landscaping mentioned without that box that's just additional landscaping that's been added so Have to answer questions on that. Well, one question I had was had to deal with the front yard landscaping. Basically, uh, as I read the ordinance, uh, we're talking about a minimum of, of one tree for every 50 feet of um, uh, front yard. And I don't see any trees along the front yard. Now, admittedly, we got the same discussion, which is what what do you own out there? What do you own in the front right now is parking lot. But uh, right. did you consider putting any trees along the road? So on that, on that bank? That, yeah, yeah on that's bank. an area we didn't have an easement in. We have the easement through the access drive, so we have some trees there that we're counting that are part of the front. So you can see the FT and the FS for shrubs that are added along that access drive. We're counting a couple of those existing trees. We're counting uh, the, the existing arborvitaes also, and we're adding some additional um, red cedars in there. So. Mm -hmm. Um, the, yeah, I mean, basically that property line is almost right at that edge. So we did not, you know, include additional trees and, you know, uh, there. But, so. but, but it's, it's, it's just pretty straightforward. One, one tree for every 50 feet of frontage. 
Um, I, but we're, we're um, so let me look at my calculations here. So we have 10 trees that were required for the, for the frontage. Right. Um, that, the, yeah, I guess you're reading it that they have to be placed at every 50 feet. Uh, I did not read it that way. I just read it as a required number of trees that were required to have, and we're meeting that. So, go ahead, Polly. Just to follow up, did you approach the mall at all in terms of asking about landscaping the bank? I did not have a conversation with the mall on that. We were, yeah, we were submitting pretty quickly with what we had. I think it's an excellent landscaping plan. I just that was the only thing lacking from my perspective is um, th there's no no trees along the road, uh, no uh, trees no. in the front, if you will. And e even if we could landscape along the bank, um, I don't know if it would really um, be ha really be effective because of the large drop from the road down to the building. So, you know, as you're up on the road, if you're, if you're ten feet higher, you know. Typical trees are going to be looking at the top or or over or anything that we'd be we'd be planting in that area. Um, you know there there are some trees along the frontage in this area that you know and along the building which um, you know they're counted as building trees but they really function as as both um, front yard trees and building trees as well. Um, again, you know we're we're looking at an an existing site and we would request that the board would understand that we're kind of doing our best under the circumstances to provide and significantly enhance the landscaping, um, you know, focusing on the area in front of the building as much as we can. But if the parking went away in front of the building, that could be turned into some green space, right? It's critical Which parking bay are, are you mentioning? Yeah. There's of the two in front, you're, which one are you talking about? Uh, along the toe slope. Uh, the east side, along the lot? Talking generally about this area. Can you put your little area There you go. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if if that parking wasn't there, we could certainly do something else with it. Uh, again, that's a conversation that I'd have to take back to the owner and um, you know see see what we're willing to do. We're, we're a car dealership. We need cars on the lot. Yeah, you know, this is not a you know we're reducing parking out of bare you know horrible necessity and having offsite storage is a nightmare. It's it's because we have to do this. I agree, it's not desirable. Um, well, I was thinking about more of the trees being along the road. Well, I was thinking like Which is on mall property, but I think that's yeah, something that, that's bank. something that can be negotiated yeah. real easily. Yeah, except then you have to worry about them interfering with the sidewalk. Well, well they can be next to the sidewalk. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and depending on what kind of tree you put in the summertime, when it gets really hot, you get sap on all the cars from the wind and the trees and everything else. So that's, you don't want trees near cars as much as you can possibly avoid it. Cause if you're, you're gonna paint, you're gonna repaint cars and not just my cars. You got a customer car that gets parked near a tree. Yeah, that's why, that's why it's not by the road. Yeah. It'd be a better place, yeah. by, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's move on because we think we found a point that needs to be resolved here. Um, anything further on landscaping screening, Paul, that we missed here? No, I mean, Brian mentioned that we included the bike racks. They're, they're more noticeable on this plan, I guess, than the other plan, so you can see where those are located. Um, we also have, um, and in addition to like building perimeter shrubs, we've added, you know, a lot of um, perennials, purple coneflower, rutabecchia, a lot of color to um, enhance the, 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 the look in front of the building as well. So, um, Oh, I've got nothing else to, to, to really add, but um, to, to the presentation on that. Great. Uh, Thanks, Paul. Looks good, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, outdoor lighting. Okay. So 
we submitted the uh, photometric plan and cut sheets for the outdoor lighting. Uh, so here's the photometric plan. Um, sadly, I don't know that this is really going to be useful on the screen, but um, uh, sort of important points here are um, your average light level of uh, 1.83 foot candles. Um, you know, it's, it's been designed with typical um, average to min and, and uh, max to min ratios. Uh, I think it doesn't quite calculate through on here because there's some areas of zeros included in, but um, that was part of the lighting designer's design. Um, the, all the uh, exterior fixtures are proposed to be replaced with new um, dark sky compliant LED fixtures, um, uh, warm uh, color temperature. Oops. Sorry about that. Um, we are, uh, because of the building expansion, we're reducing the number of pole lights on the site uh, to 17, and then uh, from 20, 20 to 17, and then the number of building mounted lights goes up from 9 to 16. Um, of this proposed 17 poles, uh, 13 of them have two fixtures. Um, currently, the pole lights all have four fixtures per pole, so um, it's, the, it's a significant reduction in fixtures. Um, da, 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 da. We're proposing to uh, control the lights with a timer in photocell, so photocell will turn lights on at dusk. Um, and then the, um, we are proposing for some lighting on the site to, to remain on all night just for purposes with all the stored vehicles on the site. Um, but after 11 p.m., we're proposing to turn off 50% of the pole light fixtures um, to reduce site lighting levels um, and then bring them back up from, from 6 a.m. to dawn for when folks start accessing the site again. I think that looks good. Uh, the only thing I had was is that I, in looking at your light, the um, the, the the lighting plan. Um, yeah. It would street without without doing the math. It would seem to me an awful lot of zeros or near zero light intensities beyond the limits of the property are included in the math. And and there's some pretty high intensity lighting on on, on the parking areas, you know, in excess of ten up to twelve uh, per candles, lumens. Mm -hmm. And so I, I I just I don't not sure how this is done, but we we've, we've had this game played with us before, where we count uh, samplings that are not even on the property, uh, and we include them in our averaging. You don't count zeros. Uh, so I, I I don't I don't know that you would know the answer to this question, but that's what this drawing looks like to me. For instance, all those um, uh, zeros and point ones and point twos uh, that are on that bank are they included in the yeah. math that comes up with an average of one point eight three? And I, if I had to guess, I'd say uh, yes. Yeah, I don't, I, I honestly don't know if, I'm assuming the lighting designer included those to show light trespass off, off property, yeah. uh, but I do not know whether that area, I know sometimes the calculation area is different than the, um, what's shown on the sheet here, but I, I, I take your point and I don't have the answer, um, not being the site designer, yeah, I'm sorry, the lighting designer. Yeah. And, and his notes basically sort of say our information based on others. So, um, so it, it just in looking at look at the intensities, I would suggest that they are pro you probably got more light than the one point eight three. I don't know whether you see the two that was a maximum based on our by bylaws uh, for an average. But um, if somebody could verify it, that it that's only speaking to the light on the property, that would be useful. And it's even questionable whether it's appropriate. And is there, I understand, I understand that this area is off our property. Um, there obviously are some areas on the property that are lit uh, very low. So just to clarify, are you just referring to this area? Or are you also referring to like this area? Uh, I'm, I, guess I, I guess I'm referring to any area where we really aren't using it for parking or any other some functional purpose. 
uh, that would be certainly certainly off property, uh, which is okay. a fair amount fair amount shown off property, and there's some shown on property that's uh, pretty much uh, swale. Right there, correct. So yeah, I mean, and, and it, may, it may not include them. I just I I've seen this done before. And without somebody telling me that, no, we didn't include that. We only included uh, basically the drive areas, the parking areas, the building areas um, in our in our averaging. Um, it just looking at the intensities, I, I, I suspect that that's not the case. You don't normally get a lot of tens when you do that. Yeah, I take your point. I, I will have to take it back to the lighting designer and see uh, what their response is. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a quick question too while we're on the topic of lighting? Um, I guess in respect to the whole conversation about the road, if there's an ongoing dialogue about landscaping and sidewalks, would it be the expectation that there would also be lighting along the road? By our bylaw, there is. Um, I, it's, I think it's the intent of the town that over the course of time, that road becomes redeveloped. So it, I think it would be open to discussion when lighting would go in. And just one of the, again, in the spirit of the whole conversation being comprehensive, they all go hand in hand. And I just, if, if we're coming back for another visit, maybe it's something that we can talk about internally too. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's an ex expectation. Um, so, I do like the way you programmed the lighting to basically uh, uh, cut it in half at night. Um, others have used dimming as a tool, uh, but cutting your lights in half gets you same, same, sort of same place. So, uh, certainly you still need to keep security, so I, I, I like the timing and, and the photo cells. Mm -hmm. So that's very good. Mm -hmm. It's just I, was, I question the averages. Stood. I, I'm going to go with the rest of the board here. I, 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 I'd like to recess this to a date certain. Um, that would be my suggestion to the members of the board. I apologize if that's an inconvenience to the app, applicant here. Uh, but I, we, I don't know that I thought we were going to resolve this tonight anyway. Um, uh, perhaps we'd like to encourage some dialogue between the mall owners and the um, town and the uh, applicant, see if we can address some of these issues, uh, and then maybe a timetable involved in that, who knows, uh, I'm, I'm speculating, I'm trying not to, trying, trying not to design, but um, uh, we still have a few more issues, uh, I, I do want to know more about stormwater, uh, and I understand that the signs will be a separate application, but um, what's, what's the pleasure of the board? I mean, as far as the date? Yeah, well, as far as you, you want to continue, or you want to, you want to. I'd like to recess. No, I think we should, I definitely think we should recess to a date certain, but I'm just concerned about one that is based on. I know there's a time concern. So, do we, are we going to do a special meeting or at a regular meeting or? Well, we, <laughs> we did a special meeting already here. Um, what's our schedule look like, Tom? We're, we're pretty busy at the next scheduled meeting, the first uh, Tuesday in September. I don't have anything else currently. So the second Tuesday, uh, the fourth Tuesday, the third, 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 third Tuesday, third Tuesday in September um, would be a good day. We are expecting a couple major site plans associated with the other end of this property. So again, the, if I would encourage if, if if we're asking these folks to to do something different to us for us, we, we should ask them that. Um, uh, but for us to come back in end of September without giving them any direction of things that you want, I think that doesn't do them any right, any good in, uh, either. I mean, do we want to finish and then regroup? You know, do we want to do, finish in a week and then regroup and give feedback, or do we want to? You guys can meet. Recruit, you know, recess, and you just meet and talk about 
and then get them. Yeah, we can deliberate, yeah. yeah. We're, okay. we're, we're, allowed to, we're allowed to enter a deliberate session and we can do that. And, then, and we, perhaps we should do that to see if we're all of one mind. Yeah. Um, and see see if we have, and then come back come back to the applicant with some suggestions right. and, and perhaps uh, some thoughts on how to get to a, a place where they'd like to go, which is a uh, permit. Um, and, and, and preferably in a timely fashion. So. I'm amenable to any you know, kind of schedule here. So, but then so, I'm, so, so I would suggest that you recess this to the second, the third Tuesday in September. And we do. But then you guys get together prior Before to then. that. Yeah, and I then, think that's fair. And give these guys some direction on yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. That timetable work? We're, we're pushing up against winter, so yeah, just I know the fastest yeah. we can go is the best timetable for us. We're, we're yeah, I mean, everything's relative, right? Um, depending on what the outcome of the conversation is three weeks from now, we're, we're bidding documents as we speak to contractors with the hopes of getting contracts signed. So if we have to go through a significant redesign, um, that will put that process on hold and potentially lead to change orders. But again, I think we're all saying the same thing. We're trying to work collaboratively to get to a positive result for everybody. So, you know, the, the yeah. sooner we can resolve it, the better. But it, it's all relative to what the resolution is, I guess. Yeah. Well, we'd all like to be having this conversation back in uh, late April. All right. Yeah. Uh, but um, we're, we're not there. Um, let's recess it to the uh, uh, third Tuesday, third Tuesday uh, and let's uh, deliberate uh, probably this week or next week. Uh, next well, week. I think I think based on the timeline, we want to get the feedback as quickly as possible. Give them right, right. Mm -hmm. so that they so that yeah. there's time to right maybe. Address some of it, or to at least address it. Yeah, give them time to. So I'll, I'll circulate uh, to you all what's convenient times and dates for you guys to meet within the next week. Week so. I I've intentionally left Tuesdays pretty much up. Well, I just have to go through like the regional planning commission. But other than that, um, but yeah, I, I'm pretty flexible actually. So. Uh, I'm very flexible at night. <laughs> until nine until seven. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll accept the motion here to recess, or I'll make the motion to recess. So I'll, I'll, I'll okay. Second. Uh, to the um, what date is that? Uh, uh, but I don't have a calendar. Twentieth. First. Twentieth. 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 Um, and um, uh, and. September twentieth is a Monday. Yeah, it's the 21st. 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 Yeah, and I'd like to meet within the week. Okay. For this board. That's fine with me. Yeah. Okay. And deliberate. So um, I need two things. I need a motion to recess this, and I also need a motion to go to the deliberate session. Tour move. Yeah, yeah recess. recess. Okay. I seconded uh, it. <laughs> all right. Um, for the discussion on that motion, all those in favor of that motion, please say goodbye by saying aye. 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 And okay, and I'll, I'll move that we meet within a week to deliberate. Move, okay. Just move to the deliberate session. Okay. Deliberate session can, can actually be remotely as well as in person. Okay, so, so I move uh, that. We, let's, 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 we need to clear people out before we go to deliberate session. We're not going we're to. We're not going, going into oh, it. Oh, we're we're just, moving we're to moving, that whole one. Moving. Oh, 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 you can't go to deliberate session unless you have a motion to go to deliberate session after that reason. Can we have that motion when we actually meet? No, we have to. No, we have to move it down. We have to decide okay. now whether to have it. And I move that we have okay. to go into deliberative session, a time a date to be meeting. determined. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. <laughs> Discussion. All in favor of that motion. Aye. 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 That was weird. Never done that before. Uh, <laughs> no, it's it, 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 right. We did the order.